Hey everyone, Carlo here with AYCB, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Santa Monica, which is a tableau building game where players are trying to create their own unique beachfront version of Santa Monica. We'll be drafting cards from this common display, placing them in our tableau, and then moving people around the different spots on our cards uh, for a variety of scoring opportunities. Stick around and let me show you how to play. I've set up here for a two-player game. Each player takes one of these starting feature tiles along with the placement bonus for the tile itself, indicated here, and then we're ready to go. In Santa Monica, you'll be taking turns acquiring cards from this display and adding them either to your top row, your beach, or your bottom row, your street or boardwalk. The game ends when any player places their 14th card in their tableau. That does not include the starting feature tile. At that point, all players tally up their points to see who has the most points and wins. On your turn, you can either take one of the four cards in the front row of the display, or you can take a sand dollar action by paying the cost if you can afford it. Each game there are two different sand dollar actions available which are selected at random. So I could take this card here and add it to my tableau. The card from the back row would slide forward in its place, and then I'd flip a new card from the deck to add to the back row. Then the next player would take their turn, and play would continue this way until the game ends. When adding a card to your tableau, it must be placed adjacent to at least one previous card or your starting feature tile. You may leave gaps between cards in a row as long as everything is connected somewhere. Now let's identify what everything actually means on these cards. First, notice these location tags. These indicate the type of location the card is, which is important for scoring opportunities throughout the game. Along either the top or the bottom of the card, depending if it's a beach or a street card, there will be a left and a right section. The section on the left is the placement bonus section, which means you gain any bonuses shown here when the card is placed in your tableau. For example, if I place this card here, I add two tourists to this card, and I also gain a sand dollar. The placement bonus on this one here gets me a sand dollar, and this here represents a movement action. This means I can move any one person, so a tourist, a local, or a VIP, up to three spaces. This one here means I can move any two different people up to two spaces each. The movement does not have to involve this card, and you don't have to move anyone if you don't want to. The movement action is always optional. On the right section will be any scoring opportunities, which are other ways to score points at the end of the game. The most common ones are adjacencies and chains. Adjacencies require you to have certain tags adjacent to the cards with the scoring opportunities. For example, this one here means you'll get three points at the end of the game as long as this is adjacent to one card with a red business tag. If you're adjacent to more than one of those tags, you'll still only get the three points once. If you had one like this, then you'd get five points if you were adjacent to two of these blue local spots. This one actually has two separate objectives, two points for being adjacent to a wave tag, and two points for being adjacent to an activity ring. Now let's look at chains. The circular symbol with the gray ring around it means you need a chain of this many consecutive tags in order to score the points, and the card itself with the objective must be part of this chain. So this card would need to be in a chain with four of these green nature tags in order to score six points. A chain is just a link of adjacent cards, like this. Some chains offer opportunities for even more points, such as this one. You would need at least five nature tags in this chain to score any points, but each one you get past five is worth an additional point. As I said, most scoring opportunities involve adjacencies or chains, but you might even see one like this, which just gives you one point at the end of the game for every two orange tourist tags. Note, as this doesn't have the gray circle like the chains, for this scoring opportunity the orange tags can be anywhere in your beachfront. Some cards will only have the placement bonus on the left, or will only have a scoring opportunity on the right, some cards will have both, and some cards will even have neither. Usually, if a card has neither, it'll instead have an activity ring, which looks like this. This is another objective you're trying to meet by the end of the game, which requires having certain people in specific spots in your tableau. For example, this one means if you have one tourist in this activity ring at the end of the game, you'll score three points. You cannot have more than one person in this ring, so you can only score those points once. You can freely move people in and out of the ring at any time as long as they remain on the same card. This card here means you can have one person of any type in here to score four points. Note that your starting feature tile, even though it's just one big tile, still technically has a top and a bottom. So to move from here to here, you would need three movement like this. So I've already shown you what the blue locals and the orange tourists look like, but what about those green ones? Well, those are VIPs, and you get those from your starting feature tile. Each tile will give you either one or two VIPs, 
and the top of the tile will indicate an objective for the game which requires you to get your VIP or VIPs to visit specific locations. So throughout the game, anytime my VIP lands on a beach card, I'll add one of these footprint tokens to the card so I can see which locations I visited at the end of the game. No card can ever have more than one footprint token. Now let's get back to those sand dollar actions I mentioned earlier. So like I said, on your turn you can either take one of those four cards in the front row, or you can take one of the two sand dollar actions by paying the cost. These sand dollar actions usually have unique abilities that allow you to sometimes take two cards from the display, or take a card from the back row, or often move people around on your board. And if you don't have cards at the end of the game that specifically give you points for leftover sand dollars, your sand dollars are worth nothing at the end of the game, so use them wisely. You're probably wondering what the deal is with these pink tokens here. This one is the foodie, and this one is the food truck. Whenever a player takes a card above one of these tokens, they get a bonus, and that token moves one space to the right. If you take the card above the foodie, you can also move any one person one space. If you take the card above the food truck, you also gain a sand dollar. If the foodie and food truck share the same spot and you take the card above both of them, you either gain one of those rewards twice, or each reward once. Then the food truck token would move two spaces. A reminder that the game ends when any player places their 14th card in their tableau, at which point everyone tallies their points to see who wins. Also, once the game ends and that player has placed their 14th card, each player has one final opportunity to move some people around. Each player can move three locals, and then either one tourist or one VIP. At the beginning of the game, you'll choose one of these three scoring objective cards that will apply to all players for that game. These are additional objectives that we'll all score for at the end. For example, the three scoring conditions on this blue one mean we'll score two points per wave tag in our longest wave group. This next one is straightforward, two points per tag in your largest chain. This last one means the player with the most unplaced people gets negative four points, and the second most unplaced people gets negative two points. You can never cram more people into an activity ring than there is space for, and anyone who's not in an activity ring counts as unplaced. After tallying the end game points, if there's a tie, the player with the most sand dollars left in their possession wins. If it's still tied, it comes down to whichever player has the largest chain in their tableau. If it's still tied, then players have to share the victory. But that's how you play Santa Monica. There's a few other symbols I didn't cover, which are in the rule book and are uh, explained quite straightforward. Um, but other than that, you know everything you need to know to get started with Santa Monica. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you get this game to the table a little bit quicker. Uh, if you enjoy our content, please consider liking and or subscribing to our video. You can check out our website, www.allyoucanboard.com for plenty of other content. And keep an eye out shortly within the next week for my review as well. Thanks and take care. See you next time.